Welcome to season two, episode three of the show. I'm so glad to get to hang out with you today. And if you haven't heard, though, I'm sure you have by now and maybe a few times, this episode is also available on YouTube, so it can really feel like we're hanging out. The link to this video version of the episode is in this podcast notes, just in case you're joining me in your ear today and want to join me via vid. Well, today's topic is inclusion and diversity in our friend groups and circles of influence and how love for others and intentional understanding of those who are other than us helps drown out hatred when our world feels like it's drowning in it at times. Creating space for others in our world starts with creating space in our own hearts and friend groups and circles of influence for others who are other than us in order to positively influence our world. I will say this is a heavier episode than I normally do. They're usually very lighthearted and fun, but I thought this was so important. I still hope you'll join me for all of it, but if you need a lighthearted episode afterward for a palate cleanser, episodes one and two were pretty fun, in my opinion. Now, this was not the original topic for episode three, but it was placed on my heart a few weeks ago, and after what just happened in Buffalo and the tragedy, my heart broke and it had to be the topic. So with that in mind, I hope you'll join me with an open mind and especially an open heart today. Deal? Now, we know we have to be a good friend in order to have good friends and form those connections with others, but what type of people are you connecting with is my question today. When you think about the important people in your life, are there more you're willing to welcome into your circle? into your personal space, into your life? Well, personal space was kind of a weird question, especially with COVID, so maybe that wasn't phrased in the best way. Anyway, when you think about your friends and examine your personal growth and the love our world has in it, I truly believe they're all connected. It's true that it's common to hear that we should hang out with people who are like we want to be, who are smarter than us, who help level us up, and who truly feel like home. All those are great things, but what about the look and feel of your friendship circle? What I'm asking truly is this, is everyone a clone of each other? Not in a weird way, but do you have friends from different backgrounds? of different races and ethnicities, of different faiths than yourself, are they a different age than you are? Is their sexuality or gender identity different from yours? Are they able differently from yourself? Is their education different than yours? And do they have different experiences than you? And do they see the world in a way that is different than you do? If you want to know how to open your eyes, it's through the eyes of others. And it's listening to hear and understand their perspectives that will truly help enrich our own. If we want more love in the world, we need to open our own hearts to others, especially those who are other from us. Others' inclusion in our lives will open our eyes. And you wouldn't want to make a decision without all the facts, right? That's sort of what it's like to not include any other diverse perspective in our lives. We don't know what we don't know. Now, I will venture to say that there is a definite comfort that is there when we spend time with people whose beliefs about the world are similar to ours and can be there to comfort us with similar experiences, and that's good. We can still grow together, but if those are good beliefs, then it's good to have the support of friends who, for example, encourage us to really pursue our dreams and believe that anything is possible and have exciting goals for our lives like we do. But if people whose perspective is the same as ours are the only ones we spend time with, we can end up in sort of a bubble that can also stunt our growth. Now, one of my best friends and I went to college together. Fun. Our school was faith-based and they had a very strict stance on a lot of things. 
some of those things I agree with to this day and others I actually don't agree with any longer. This friend and I are still so close because we were able to, after we left the bubble, that was that school, gain perspective on the world through others we interacted with and through new experiences outside of that school and its rules. And we're able to develop our own beliefs about some of those topics that don't align with what we were taught. Sometimes that applies to what we were taught growing up too. We would never have had the opportunity to examine our beliefs if we had never left that bubble and circle of friends that came with it and experienced life together, but with others outside of that bubble because the bubble popped, which I'm hoping the housing bubble does soon too. But I got to say, considering a house on my own as a single woman right now, props to you all doing it, but you know, not there yet personally, but so supportive of those of you who are and good for you. So how do we do this? Well, one is we can look at how to examine your circle right now. Another is we can find friends who are outside our normal circle of influence currently. And another is how we open our minds to include others well and genuinely open our hearts and arms to them too. Okay, so let's start with the examination of our current state because how do we grow and move forward if we don't know where we're starting? All right, think of the five people you spend the most time with right now. It's been said that you become a combination of the five people you spend the most time with. So we really should be choosing very wisely. Sometimes there are things we can't get around, like if you're in high school and living with siblings, or maybe you have a coworker you're around constantly or any number of things. But for those you choose to be in your life, Who are those five people you spend the most time around by choice? Now, when you hang out with those people, are they lifting you up or bringing you down? First of all, if they're bringing you down, we need to reevaluate anyway, because someone bringing us down will shut us down. So there cannot be much we can learn from someone if we're shut down, right? Okay. So now consider those people's beliefs, those five people's beliefs. Are they the same as yours about the world, about politics? There are some real passions behind politics, let me tell you, and probably sports teams. (laughs) I've been hearing a lot of that lately. What about pursuing your dreams? Are you on the same page? What about how you all look? Is it the same? Be honest with yourself. What about your backgrounds? Are they similar? Again, there are pros and cons to having others around us who are just like us. But the right balance, in my opinion, is a balance of those who are like us and those who are different from us, around us, all at once. And often they can be the same people. Maybe they have a different faith background, but they have the same political views as you. Maybe they don't look like you or sound like you, but they believe in going after your dreams like you do. Maybe their sexuality is different than yours, but they'll cheer on the Cowboys or for me, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders with you. We'll all have things to bond over. And if you keep asking what people enjoy, there's bound to be something you both like somewhere like puppies. Everyone likes puppies, right? No? What? Who are you? (laughs) Just kidding. Maybe it's the same show or book or workout class or sports team, but that's how we'll look at part two here when it comes to how to find people outside our normal sphere of influence in a moment. But now that you've examined the people you hang out with the most and your best friends, what have you discovered? What about if you look at the people you hang out with regularly? Same thing. There might be more than five, but are they all like you? Or could there potentially be room to expand your circle and thus your mind and heart for people? 
They are so connected. Compassion truly is far more easily fostered with understanding. When we can put ourselves in another's shoes because we have heard and can wrap our heads around what they've been through or are going through, even if we've never experienced it ourselves, we can put ourselves in another's shoes and have empathy for them. And that starts with listening to understand. And that starts with having others to listen to. And others who are not there for us to meet some quota, but who are there for us to genuinely listen to and learn from. While we don't want to put the burden on others to educate us, knowing and loving people who are different than us helps us become more loving toward those we don't know because we can understand their perspective based on those we spend time with and know and love. Familiarity works wonders. When we look at otherness, we may be tempted to disregard what we don't understand. But wouldn't you like to be understood too? Okay, so if you find you may need to change your circle at all, here are some things you can do to do that. First of all, people often bond over common interests. Is there a small group or a sports club or a book club or a knitting club, a kayaking club? I don't know. But is there a club or a team or something you could join to meet more people who share your interests in one category so you can learn more about another category in their lives? Is there a coworker you can get to know more who is different than you? Can you use work to bond and they're right there, they're around. And the more work friends you have, the better, in my opinion. We spend so much time at work, so why not make a few more pals there? Spoiler alert, applying different perspectives to a problem or product helps us find the best solution at work too, and in our lives. Is there maybe an app you're willing to join like Bumble BFF? I've considered using it many times, but have friends who actually have and have loved it and made true friends on there. There's a bit of a more intentionally direct approach, but it works great too. In this digital age, we can meet friends online in our cities or in other cities too. How cool is that? But finding something in common is always possible, one, and two, is a great base for getting to know someone, especially if they have a lot of different perspectives than you do. It'll open the door for you to bond over something so that when they're comfortable and you're comfortable in your knowing that person, you can share your perspectives openly with them. And it expands your mind and your comfort zone and your knowledge. And who doesn't want that? You can even introduce them to other friends. You can even meet new friends through them and their friends. There are so many ways you can expand your circle of influence. You can even learn from, and I highly recommend you also learn from, people who have vlogs, blogs, podcasts, written articles, who have written books, who've given TED Talks, and the list is endless, but... Because the burden of understanding those who are different from us should not fall on them, these are really helpful ways to learn to be a good friend to those who are different from you. Now, once you have those friends, acquaintances, people you're getting to know, how do you make sure you're approaching different topics and people with an open mind and heart? This can also be applied to literally every person on earth, but for context today, how do we do that with new friends and their differing perspectives from ours? This topic was sparked initially by a book I read about a month ago called How to Have Your Life Not Suck. (laughs) Highly recommend, but it's by Bianca Juarez Althoff. And as I was on a plane reading, a sentence really stuck out to me as she was explaining wanting to be included by others in her own otherness. And she said, be the friend you wish you had. Be the friend you wish you had. It's that simple, friends. 
even those who are most like us will have different opinions than us sometimes. How do you lovingly accept those opinions and celebrate them even when they might think differently than us? Even if we strongly disagree? There are topics we have held really tightly onto with grips of steel in our opinions. Some of them are appearing in politics right now and pieces of our constitution, if you're in the United States, are being questions in ways that can cause a huge divide between people. How do we see the person behind the opinion, even when we're really passionate? How do we love others? How do we try and put ourselves in their shoes to understand their perspective, even if we don't agree with it, and still respect them as a human and treat them the way we'd want to be treated when they discover we have a differing opinion on something than they do? My girl Bianca preaching, be the friend you wish you had. When we're experiencing hatred, even toward cilantro personally, it comes in so many things and truly tastes like soap to me and I have to pluck it out of my salad. Anyway, when we're experiencing and ruminating on hatred or hating something, it doesn't do good things to us. You know what I'm talking about, right? We feel worse. When we ruminate, our state becomes irate. And you actually thought we were getting through an episode without a weird rhyme. I could never disappoint like that. (laughs) But hatred doesn't feel good in our bodies, in our minds, in our souls. When we are ruminating on something we hate, it changes our mood for the worse. We start to feel uneasy in our bodies and unregulated, and it does something to our soul inside of us and really causes a ripple effect that makes us behave in a way we don't love. Responding to otherness with hatred isn't good for anybody. It's not good for the person at the receiving end, and it's not good for us at the giving end. Nobody wins. In fact, everybody loses. But what if we approached otherness with curiosity? What if we approached otherness with willingness to learn, the hunger to learn, and to understand? What if we sought to understand our world and other people and thus ourselves even better through learning other perspectives and including others in our lives who are different than us more often? Can you imagine how much we'd grow as people? How much we'd grow the circle of people in our lives that we adore? How much we'd grow in loving others? It feels good to love others to give to others. We can give our ears. And when we give our ears, we receive so much, so much knowledge, so much understanding, so much compassion, so much life, so much connection, so much we didn't know before. It's been said that it's better to give than to receive. But when we give our ears to others who are other than us, we receive so much. So friends, what are you going to do to learn more about others who are other from you and thus learn so much more about yourself and the world and the amazing diverse world of people we are blessed to have on this earth? How boring would it be if we were all clones? Everyone would have a cat and need to deep clean their bathroom if it were clones of me. Yeah. Let yourself be the one who starts the positive ripple effect of inclusion and loving others because it's the only thing that's going to counteract the ripple effect of hatred of others. If you still aren't convinced, Martin Luther King Jr., I've decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Any hatred we have within ourselves toward others hurts the other person, but it also hurts us. But if we love others and turn confusion into curiosity and misunderstanding into listening to understand and disagreements into a willingness to learn from a different perspective, we can create a voice for those who don't always get one. And wow, what a better world we'll enjoy when we get to hear what others have to say because you never know what thing you didn't know that might just change your life for the better. Bianca, be the friend you wish you had. 
love others in the way you wish you were loved? Hate is not the answer. Listen to others in the way you wish others listened to you. Respect others in the way you wish you were respected. Gandhi, be the change you wish to see in the world. Change starts somewhere and that positive ripple effect can start with us, can start with you, can start with intentional inclusion and diversity in who we fill our world with because the world is full of so many incredible people and they often come in different packages than us, but they all have unique gifts inside. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for the most serious episode I have ever created, but that needed to be done. Feel free to share this with anyone who you think it'd be helpful for or encouraging for. You can make a huge impact on this world. I truly believe that. As always, go and make me proud and most importantly, go and make yourself proud. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. And I truly hope that the things that we got to chat about today truly plant a seed in your heart because it will grow so many beautiful things in this world if we fill it with love. Bye. Always the kitty. Say hey. Uh-huh. Say hello. Got some fuzz on your head. Yeah. Okay.